Hello, hello. So I want to show you a little project I've worked uh, on in visualizing earthquakes around the world. And really what motivated this was uh, Nine came out with geospatial nodes and I just had to check them out. So I looked for some data which would let me kind of use a couple of them. So to get them, you go. You have to have 94.7. So it's only with 94.7 now. It was developed by some people at Harvard. So that is like super bougie. So uh, you need to go to install them extensions. Let me uncheck hide items that are already installed. And you can search for geospatial, GSP. Oops, oh, Right, so yeah, geospatial. <laughs> when I wake, I spelled it wrong. Okay, geospatial analytics extensions for Lime. You can check on that to install it. I already have mine installed. Let me show you quickly some of the things that you have available with it. Mm, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's so much. See, there's so much things you can do. Each of these have like you know sub sub nodes. So there's a lot of things you can do. One analysis that I think would be super cool to do with this is a uh, trade what do you call it again trade uh <laughs> trade something basically it's a kind of analysis where a company might um make like some trade boundaries and see if they have enough stores to service the customers there it's is it trade centers trade circles trade something uh but i couldn't find data for that so i didn't go down that route so there's a lot of things you can do a lot of calculations statistical calculations conversions graphing so for this project i only use two of them the data i'm working with i got it from uh i got it from esri and it's this link right here basically they have lots of different data for earthquakes and i think they have for a couple of other uh natural disasters as well and they have other data types as well here's the link where you can pull the data of course the workflow is going to come with the, with the data if you want to grab this from the nam community hub to check it out to play with it to edit it to, to do whatever you want to do i pull this on the um 12th of december and it has data from from the 1900s up until December 8th, 2022. So it's a pretty big data set. It has lots of data for you to do whatever you want to do with it. Uh, yes, let me show you. I actually got rid of a lot of columns from the data set because the data set was way, way too big. But I think I retained the core columns here. You can see I have the magnitude, the time, the title of the events. The title itself has the magnitude, the, um, the coordinate directions and where the earthquake occurred. There's a column here for whether or not there was a tsunami associated with that. You have the longitude, latitude, and the elevation. A lot of earthquakes you notice, they actually occur in the ocean. So that's why a lot of these have uh, deeply negative elevations. And this is in meters. I did some cleaning. Uh, I did some pressing for the date and time to get those separately. And I also extracted some of the date time components for some of my graphics down the line. I made a rule engine to assign time of the day and I was going to graph this, but I decided against it because I guess my assignments uh, for hours into the time of the days is kind of subjective. And when I did the graphing, early mornings had the most earthquakes, but you can see that they have six hours in them. The same thing with afternoons, but actually they had more than afternoons, but I thought there was too much subjectivity in this, so I didn't retain this graph, but you can graph it. I left the data in there and you can see nighttime only has three hours in there, so. Let me try to slow down. I think I'm talking too quickly. <laughs> I'm a bit excited. But honestly, um, back in high school, my favorite subjects were geography and English literature. And in geography, I was obsessed with volcanoes and earthquakes. So this was a really fun thing for me to do. Anything else interesting? All right. Okay. So I also did magnitude classes, uh, and this was good for graphing. And the reason, and I got I got the classes from this website there. Basically, anything below 5.4 is minor anything above 7.9 is severe and you can click on this link to read that article and to, that's basically where i got my classifications from and this here is one of those nice new fresh shiny juicy geospatial nodes so this just translates the, your latitude and longitude to, geog to geometry so that you can use them to graph later on so in here i have open component open so in here i have the very nice cool node to graph and i really like it because there is a lot of maps okay it's been a bit slow i think i need a new laptop <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, so uh, you specify a geometry column here and the, you specify the columns you want to include in your tooltip. Just notice that uh, the order in which these things appear in your tooltip go with the order of your columns. So I did use a resorter because I wanted to make sure the title was first, the magnitude was second. So just use a resorter to sort things appropriately if you want them in your tooltip like this. Um, you can specify what columns you use for the size. So I made the size of my of my circles to go with the magnitude because of course I want the bigger magnitude <clears throat> earthquakes to have bigger um, bigger circles. I also assigned the color to the magnitude as well. So it's really highlighting those large events with both the color and the sizes. And that's pretty cool. But the coolest thing here to me is the, uh, actually, I don't know if this is just taking a while to load or what's going on. Um, but the, the coolest thing here for me is that you have so many different map options. If you want this to be faster, you might want to take a more basic map like the open street map or the watercolor map is kind of it has a kind of like a childish undertones, honestly, but it's cool, but it's also light. I'm using the satellite one, which would take some more time to render, but it's just like so pretty. So I do like that one. And let me cancel this and then here i just have some specifications so you can search you can search for a place you can search for, uh, you can select the start and the end year that you want to graph and i do recommend using this because if you don't put some filters it's going to take forever forever to render so don't try to visualize everything all at once if you want to go down that route then do change the map type to something lighter and you're gonna have to wait for a while for it to render because again we're doing over a century we have over a century of data here uh, but the thing to note with this, with this data set is it only has those earthquake events that are more than 4.0. So everything less than that, it doesn't have. Okay, so let's see what this graph looks like. Um, I set it to default to show in the last two years and show in Japan so that it renders that much quicker. But you can always change the specifications once you have it open. Okay. Uh, if you search for a place that has no data, it does show you an error. So let's say I search for Nigeria. Nigeria, we don't really get earthquakes there. Um, so here it shows, uh, basically it's saying if there's an empty list. So there's an empty set. So there's, there's no data for Nigeria for earthquakes. For this time period, I don't believe there is for Nigeria for any time period. But let's say we want to do... I, Qatar as well doesn't have data. Actually, let's try... I'm ending this to, let's do 1900. Let's check the full data range. Yeah, there's, not, there's nothing. Okay, let's, let's do China. Let's do 20, from 20, 2008 to now, uh, China. Wait, hold on. <laughs> there's China. <laughs> China, okay, search. It's searching, it's thinking. Okay, and those are the earthquakes in China from 2008 to 2022. You can zoom in if you want to. And yeah, those are the events. This one is a large one. This was 7.3. Um, 2021, huh? I don't recall hearing about this. And was it? Yeah, it's, was it, it looks like it was on land also. Was it? Hmm. So uh, that's that's pretty much the map. There's another visual they have, which I think is super cool. But I had a couple of uh, a couple of things I didn't like about it. And mostly it was kind of a me thing because I have issues seeing even with my glasses. So a lot of the things were hard for me to read on the screen. Oh, what's it called again? Okay, yeah, this one. This one. Like the map itself is beautiful. It's, it's gorgeous. See how beautiful it is? Why is it not showing anything? Right, because I did China. I connected it to my node, which has uh, China. So we have to go to China. And then why are these over here? 
Okay, right. So if there, if the title has the word China, um, it's going to pop up. There wasn't a column which has the country. So, so that search is a free string search in the entire title. So let's say, for instance, there is a town called China in Mexico. It's going to pop up. But here, over in China, you can see all, all of the different, the different ones here. This one lets you search, which I like, but it doesn't seem to... Uh, uh, it, let, let me check this again. So, I mean, it was already filtered to China, so that doesn't help. But when I did the search, it was showing me the results one by one. It wasn't like showing me all the results for for China based on the title, if that makes any sense. But I do love it. It's beautiful. But these here are just too tiny. I can, I can hardly see them. Um, yeah. So if there was a way to make these things look bigger, I would have been happier. And also, I couldn't find an option to control the colors and the sizes. So that's why I didn't uh, work with this one. But besides that, like it just looks so nice and modern and sleek and beautiful. But that's something else you can check out. Let me just quickly show you the visuals. Uh, so this has different components. So of course, you can run this as a web app if you have the nice server. So let's play this. Okay, so the first question we have, have earthquakes increased over time? So looking at this, you might think that they're increasing, but what I'll think is we've had some uh, improvements in technologies for detecting these earthquakes, especially keeping in mind that a lot of these are happening in the ocean. So, you know, we're having more, more equipment in the ocean to, to track all these earthquakes. So that's probably a large explanation for these spikes. And you can even notice further that we've only had the spikes for the minor earthquakes. The major ones, these are the kinds of earthquakes that you can very easily detect, you know, because we're humans, you feel the earth moving when it's a major one. Those ones, you don't really see a spike. And those ones, you, you do see a spike from the 1940s, but you don't see like this dramatic spike you're seeing for the minor ones. So I'm thinking, and the minor ones are the ones which constitutes, you know, the most. So I'm thinking that a lot of this is to do with, with better equipment. And here are some cool things about these visuals. You can look at this graph as a percentage area chart, for instance. You can see back again before the 1970s, the minor ones they did make up some, but then there's a massive spike after the 1970s. Further, a larger percent of the ones that were probably reported back then are the ones that could be felt. So they would probably make up a higher percentage than the minor ones which were not being felt but now with our better equipment we're catching everything and since we're catching so much of the minor one the proportions of the major ones have gone down because we're not just reporting what we can detect physically you know as human beings but also reporting what our equipment can detect hope that makes sense but yes definitely research this more i'm not a what you, is this seismologist uh, earthquake person i'm not an earthquake person so those are just my thoughts on it and uh, one more thing you can do with this chart, let's say you only wanted to look at how the severe earthquakes have, uh, what, what the trend has been over time, you can click on these to unselect the other ones. And we're only left with the severe ones. So you can, uh, it's interactive, you can select exactly what you want to see. Moving on to the next one. What days do earthquakes occur? It doesn't really look like it's a dramatic difference. Uh, Sunday seems to have the most, but it would be nice to do some statistical tests on this to see if there's any statistically significant differences, but just eyeballing it, there's nothing like super dramatic. For the hours, it looks like, you know, from afternoons, uh, afternoons to evenings, just have, they tend to have more occurrences than, than the mornings. And you can see a similar thing with the um, early mornings. But yeah, the mornings seem to have the the least um, the mornings seem to have the least earthquake activities. But again, some st statistical test will tell you whether or not this is this is significant. So that could be something further you can do if you grab this workflow. You want to play with with things. I, I'm gonna upload this uh, workflow to the Nime Hub. I'm pasting the link in this uh, post as well, so you can go grab that if you want to. And again, you can grab the data set from this website so they can get the whole full data set. I don't think I missed anything, but if you want that, you can do that as well. And in the future, you can always grab the data as you can grab the data too to have more up to date data. And they do have an API, but I'm not quite sure if it's free. So if you want to make this a, a thing that's updating, you can do that as well. All right, that's the end of this video. Thank you. Goodbye.